It's been pretty cold lately, so I thought we'd take it down south, but unfortunately I overshot and missed the equator, so Antarctica it is. Grab yourself a blanket and listen up because we've got 10 very cool and pretty dark discoveries for you. First on our list today we have the discovery and revival of an ancient virus freed from the Antarctic permafrost after 48,500 years. Oh my gosh, have we learned nothing from sci-fi and television. You do not restore ancient viruses. You don't do it. Well, they did it. The zombie virus was discovered as a result of melting ice in the Antarctic region after laying dormant for tens of thousands of years. And honestly, scientists believe that while the risks are low, much like your ex, it does raise red flags as a potential endangerment to human health. The virus was returned to its former infectious glory in the lab after being inserted with cultured cells. Luckily for us, as of yet, scientists have only attempted to reanimate viruses that target single cell amoebas, not humans or animals. That's great and all, but it still seems like pretty risky business to me. The scientist who performed the reanimation maintains he has done so to shed light on the potential risk of more dangerous viruses' ability to resurface and affect humans should the Antarctic permafrost continue to melt. Not only that, but as the ice continues to thaw, it also has the potential to release chemical and radioactive waste into our ecosystems. So, think about that. Next up, we have the discovery of a hidden landmass, frozen in time and ice, and estimated to be bigger than Belgium. The landscape consists of hills and valleys believed to have been carved by ancient rivers over millions of years ago. Its existence was confirmed using a technique called radio echo sounding, which uses sound waves to determine distances based off of which corresponding maps of underground structures and landscapes can be created. Without even laying eyes on an area, we are able to determine the heights of its peaks and the depths of its deepest points. The area of land stretching 32,000 square kilometers, 12,000 square miles, is a scientific marvel as scientists believe its climate and geology to have been massively different from that of modern day Antarctica. Which of course brings me to my next point. Also discovered within the ice and hidden beneath the frozen desert were the remains of an estimated 90 million year old subtropical rainforest. Scientists were so excited when deep beneath the ice they discovered an incredibly well preserved network of root systems within a sediment core sample. A sediment core sample is basically like a ground extraction that shows all the layers of sediment that have settled over the last, I guess in this case, 90 million years. Not only did they find root systems, but the soil was so well preserved that they were also able to find traces of pollen, spores, and the remains of flowering plants. Based on these findings, it was concluded that the coast of West Antarctica at one point in time contained a thick, swampy rainforest which was home to a large variety of plant and animal species. Scientists also concluded weather patterns of heavy rainfall and heightened levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Next on the list we have BLOOD Falls. I apologize for having to spell it out for you, I don't think I'm allowed to say that word on here, but just by the look I'm sure you can guess where the name comes from. So let's talk about the color. If you want to guess how it happens, I'll give you a moment, maybe pause the video, head to the comments, lock in your answer, you done? Okay, the answer is iron, but not in the way you think. The red waters are rich in iron, but they don't actually turn red until they come into contact with the air. Well, maybe you did think that, but let me explain further. It's actually a mix of iron oxides and hydroxides along with high salt content in the water, chlorine and magnesium that give the river flow its yellow, orange and reddish coloring rather than the classic like murky brown we would usually see coming out of eroded sink faucets. Super creepy, but again, super cool. Next up we have the discovery of ancient bacteria like nothing we've ever seen on earth before. Like it's so strange, scientists wonder if it might possibly have come from like outer space. Perhaps a passenger on an ancient asteroid that arrived on Earth millions of years ago. And why do they think that? Well, because generally bacteria has a minimum requirement of six things it needs in order to survive, and those things are food, acidity, time, generally a warm temperature, oxygen, and moisture. But this bacteria just needs air, making it an absolute scientific anomaly and a massive discovery that moves us forward in our understanding of the way in which extraterrestrial organisms might be able to survive on other planets and in space. What do you guys think? 
As we move past our halfway point, let's go beneath the ice all the way down to the Antarctic seafloor where the once lost ship Endurance was discovered in impeccable condition, preserved by the country's icy waters. For a long time, the Endurance shipwreck remained one of the greatest undiscovered mysteries, but that all changed in 2022 when, at a depth of 3,008 meters, the vessel was found, and that's 9,868.8 feet. The discovery was made via a combination of helicopters, underwater robots, and other state-of-the-art technology, which allowed it to be remotely filmed and explored. Although the wreck was crushed by ice and sunk over 100 years ago, the ship's name was Although the wreck was crushed by ice and sunk over 100 years ago, the ship's name was still clearly legible along the stern of the vessel. And this is an incredible scientific feat as it highlights the extreme advances in technology, allowing us to explore some of the most inhospitable and extreme depths of our oceans. And next up we have a freaky looking lanky underwater insect known as the giant sea spider. While they aren't actually spiders, they are in fact part of the insect family and they are the largest sea spider found anywhere in the world with some showing off a leg span of up to 10 inches. Ooh. These animals belong to a rare group that have no need for a respiratory system, breathing instead through their digestive system. The animal typically feeds off anemones, sea worms, jellyfish, sponges, and soft corals, making it technically carnivorous. And it feeds using a small tube which it inserts into its soft-bodied prey, allowing it to literally suck their guts out. Gross. As for the spider's guts, those are stored in the long, spindly legs of the creature, commonly found in shallow waters surrounding Antarctica. However, they have also been spotted at depths of 7,000 meters, 23,000 feet, making them highly adaptable to changes in both pressure and environment. Next up, we have another relative giant, the giant Antarctic scale worm, which measures in at 20 centimeters, 7.8 inches long, and 10 centimeters, 4 inches wide. Now, that might not seem gigantic to you, but remember, it's a worm, so. Yeah, it's pretty big. And it's also super uncomfortable to look at. Well, from head on, but the underbelly is actually quite cool, looking as though the creature is lined with shiny gold feathers along its edges, which are actually appendages that help it move along rock formations and the sea floor. Its back is covered in scales that act as fully functioning body armor to protect against predators. Back to the head, which is, to put it nicely, unpleasant, and it's not even a head, really, it's just a fully retractable throat. While there is still so much we don't know about this recently discovered creature, the two sharp fangs on both its top and bottom jaw suggest it has a carnivorous diet and hunting rather than scavenging behavior. The animal is known to enjoy depths of up to 1,640 feet, and they're also super good for the underwater ecosystem, assisting in the building of reefs by recycling ocean waste through a process called worm composting, where they turn food scraps into other organic material that acts like soil for the sea floor. Next up in our top two today, we have Mount Erubus, the world's southernmost fully active volcano that last erupted in 20. 20, and contains a very elusive lava lake. The lava lake sits within the volcano and it's basically a pool of molten lava that never hardens but instead remains in a constant viscous fluid state. While you might have assumed this kind of thing to exist at the bottom of every active volcano around the world, you'd be incorrect as they are actually incredibly rare because they require an incredibly specific set of conditions to be able to form. You see, a volcano's lava is generally held way underground in something called a magma chamber that connects to a volcano through an underground channel in the Earth's crust. And ever so often, under the right conditions, the magma chamber sends lava shooting up through the channel and the crater of the volcano into the atmosphere. A lava lake is different. It exists above ground within the crater of a volcano. And the bottom of the lake is connected to the magma chamber by a much shorter passageway called a conduit, which is basically like a long pipe. The lava from the chamber rises into the lake and when the lava begins to cool, it moves back down towards the chamber to heat and rise once more. Thus, the lake remains unfrozen and in constant flow. Also a pretty cool sight to see. 
And finally, last on the list, we have ancient skulls, or at least that's what they kind of look like. These elongated skulls were allegedly found in 2016 by a team of archaeologists working in Antarctica. The discovery was shocking, and the bones dated all the way back to 1820. And it was originally believed that humans had not set foot in Antarctica until hundreds of years later. Of course, the timeline, along with the appearance of the bones, has led many to speculate that these bones are not belonging to the first humans in Antarctica, but rather the first extraterrestrials on Earth. While scientists are still baffled by the age of the bones, the shape of them didn't come as too much of a surprise to professionals, as the elongated skulls have been discovered in other places around the world and have been attributed to ritualistic physical cultural practices done by certain ancient societies. It has been said, however, that these particular skulls appear to not only be elongated, but much bigger than any to have ever been found before. So. Who knows, maybe aliens aren't such a bad guess after all. All right guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our video today. I had a lot of fun researching it. Let us know what you'd like to see next. I'm Hannah Thompson and I'll see you in the next video.